friends, and thank you for joining us today. I want to thank all of you who have been taking the time to watch our videos. It is greatly appreciated. I am trying my best to get the word out on what is happening to the Christian community in Pakistan. A lot of Christians in Pakistan suffer in silence as they have no help. I am trying to help my fellow brothers and sisters by being their voice. Please join me by being their voice as well and perhaps one day this barbaric blasphemy law will be abolished in Pakistan. My friends, if you like our videos, consider subscribing and sharing this content on your social media. As more people find out about the injustices that Christians face in Pakistan, the less the media and the government of Pakistan will be able to hide the injustices. I have also started a Discord server and if you wish, please join me there. I will leave a link in the description. Now, on to today's story of a brave couple named Shagufta Koser and Shafkat Emanuel, who are Christians and have been in prison since 2013. They were convicted and sentenced to death in April of 2014 by a trial court in Toba Teik Singh. The couple face execution for sending blasphemous texts to a Muslim cleric insulting Muhammad from a phone containing a SIM card that was registered in Shagufta's name. My friends, you have to understand the Christians of Pakistan know that if they blaspheme Muhammad or any Islamic figure, they will go to jail and rot in prison. Once they are done rotting in prison, they will be executed. Do you really believe that a couple will send blasphemous texts to a Muslim cleric insulting Muhammad? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Shagufta and Emmanuel both deny the allegations and believe that the SIM card was obtained by someone using a copy of her national identity card. Samira Hamidi, who is Amnesty International's Deputy Regional Director for South Asia, said that the mandatory death sentences for Shagufta Koser and Shafkat Emanuel are emblematic of the dangers faced by the country's religious minorities as long as the blasphemy laws remain in place. They have been in prison for the better part of eight years waiting for their appeal hearing, when they should not be in jail in the first place. We call for their immediate and unconditional release. Ms. Hamidi also said that the government of Pakistan must urgently repeal its blasphemy laws that have been flagrantly abused and caused an immeasurable amount of harm. Now you have to understand, Pakistan's blasphemy laws are incompatible with international human rights laws. They are overly broad, vague, and coercive. They have been used to target religious minorities, pursue personal vendettas, and carry out vigilante violence. Judges, fearing reprisals if they do not deliver the harshest of sentences, often fear for their lives when they're adjudicating blasphemy cases. So essentially, if that judge is presiding over a blasphemy trial does not hand out a death sentence, the mullahs and the Muslims will kill the judge and his family. This is why the judges try to avoid having to preside over blasphemy trials. The couple's appeal was due to be heard in April of 2020, but was postponed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. At their last hearing on February 15th of 2021, the judges left the court as they were due to hear the appeal. Amnesty International and myself call for the full repeal of Pakistan's blasphemy laws. A further concern is the automatic and mandatory imposition of the death penalty, which is prohibited under international human rights laws and standards. The mandatory death penalty does not allow judges the possibility of taking into account the personal circumstances of the defendant or the circumstances of the particular offense. The mandatory death penalty does not allow the judges the possibility of taking into account the personal circumstances of the defendant or the circumstances of the particular offense. And the use of this punishment for crimes that do not meet the most serious crimes threshold, meaning intentional killing. It has been six years since their appeal was launched and the couple's family and lawyers expressed frustration that the hearing had again been delayed indefinitely. 
Saiful Malok, the couple's lawyer, accused the judge in Islamabad of avoiding hearing the case out of fear, as blasphemy cases are highly controversial and often dangerous for those involved. Mr. Malok said that the judges in Pakistan will rarely hear cases of blasphemy until there is political or international pressure. He also said that there is no substantive proof against my clients and they should have been released long ago. Shagufta Koser and Emmanuel are being kept in two separate prisons in different districts of the Punjab province. Both are in isolation, separated from the other prisoners, as it is feared that if they mix with other prisoners, they may get killed. Close family members of the couple also fear for their lives. Shugufta Koser's brother, Joseph, who does not want to share his last name and place of residence, left for Europe soon after Shugufta Koser's arrest when he found himself facing threats. Joseph said, My brother-in-law is almost physically dead as he is paralyzed and can't move his lower body. He said, My sister is also mentally dead as she has been living alone for six years and also feels people may kill her even in prison. She is very disturbed and her hair is falling out. Joseph said, The allegations were false that the couple insulted Muhammad. Friends, in the comments below, let me know if you believe that blasphemy laws in Pakistan should be abolished. Thank you again for taking the time to watch this video. And I encourage you to share this story on your social media. Let the world know what is happening to the Christians of Pakistan. And as always, please pray for the Christians of Pakistan. Thank you.